the ones that are going to see this film probably would not believe what this lake looked like 60 years ago. It was just so beautiful back in them days, but as, as time changes and, and uh, people start moving in and developments and, and construction of roads and so on and so forth, uh, all the siltation is coming into the lake. We have really bad storms. The waters flow from way up in Pine Plains and come down through this very place and cause flooding damage, which can be severe. There's so much runoff from upstream and, uh, and we're the end of the line. So that, that is the biggest problem here we faced. And so the ability to reduce pollution and storm water, any kind of storm or sewage water into the Hudson is critical in a lot of ways. The project that we know about over in Wapakoon Falls, where the stormwater is treated and becomes clean to discharge into the stream, is exactly the type of urban project that we need on both sides of the river. I'm Matt Alexander, mayor of Wappingers Falls. We were facing three big issues. The first one being our ability to provide clean, good drinking water. The second one being the state of our lake and the contaminated runoff that had ruined the quality of the lake. And the third one being flood control. We bought the lake back in 1967, and this went to a public referendum, which the people at that time all agreed that it was an asset to the village of Wappingers Falls. As I was growing up, it was, oh, anywhere from 10, 15, even 20 feet deep. You can see that the channel that comes around the lake and subsequently goes over the dam has been created because of the silt. Anywhere that you see the heavy water chestnut, it's probably approximately six inches deep. The aquifer that's adjacent to this creek is what supplies the town of Wappinger with almost 80% of its drinking water. We're under the influence of nitrates and phosphates that are flowing from the upper communities in the northern part of the county. The town of Poughkeepsie, town of LaGrange, town of uh, Pleasant Valley, and this takes in Vassar Road, 376, Route 9D, uh, Widmer Road. It brings in what we call detritus or decaying leaves, soil surface, and any chemicals and organic material in that surface. We got together with Renewage and we talked about which location would be the best location for building an ecosystem. We knew that we had to come up with a location in a densely populated municipality. My name is Curtis Schmidt. I am the general manager of the Northern and Southern Duchess News, the Beacon Free Press. We published those three weekly newspapers out of this building. We looked at competing technologies. We looked at just plain old retention ponds. Retention ponds would basically put polluted water back into the ground. It doesn't do as much good to dredge the lake down here at this point if all the runoff's gonna to continue to come down from the municipalities that are upstream from us. So this was something where we had to think in an innovative way and really work hard at coming up with a solution that would treat the contaminants that go into the ground and work in a vegetative process that stops the contamination from reaching our waterways. Here we are at the Southern Duchess News. This is the location of the ecosystem site that we manufactured here. It's taking 140 acres of drainage. It's very important to slow the stormwater down at this point to give it a chance to get back into the ground. So the first step in here is our sediment forebay. It's got a dynamic storage depth in there. So when you get a rainstorm event, that water level will fluctuate. When that water is draining through, it's picking up sticks and leaves and rocks. So we want to capture that. The finer pollutants that make it through here that are the soluble contaminants like the nitrogen and phosphorus, some solids, some bacteria, those contaminants pass through to the wetland that's right behind us here. So in this wetland, water enters in the bottom and there are different layers of stone. So the bottom is this void space where you can have sediment accumulate. And then you've got two to four inch stone. And on top of that, you have one inch stone. And then finally you have pea stone. And then on top of the pea stone, we put some compost there. And that's just so that we can grow the plants. As the organics pass through the wetland, you have bacteria that have grown on the surface area of the stone. 
and on the surface area of the roots. And so they break down those organics into just simple carbohydrates and they're used up by the bacteria. And then those plants take up the nutrients and take it out of solution so it doesn't pass on through. And we have a way that we can stir that up and pump it out. And the nutrients that are attached and associated with that sediment, they can get removed from the watershed completely. So anything beyond the water quality volume storm actually backs up into our sediment forebay and then overflows out here. This shallow wetland has a permanent pool in it. During big events, it ponds up. We can actually have three feet of water elevation change in there. That water goes out through a water level control structure, which is really just a concrete basin and it's got a standpipe in it. Ultimately, that's where all of the storm water goes and then leaves the site through the existing culverts that were always there. If you don't slow the water down, it's going to have a massive effect on the population area around Southern Dutchess County because this is what causes flooding by removing riparian buffers and natural ecosystems that this one seeks to imitate. After Sandy and Irene, communities were left with the challenge of rebuilding from the ground up because infrastructure was wiped out. That's the time when you think about what we can do differently. Back then, we had to evacuate almost 45 people out of this apartment complex because of that storm and because of the flooding. This is a great example of how a business and a village, a community, can work together with a consulting firm such as Renewage to put together a plan that benefits all three and mainly the people of the village of Wappingers Falls in this case. We looked at this project, it was $700,000 because we were the demonstration project. We got 90% of that funded through the Green Innovative Grant Program. We think that we can maintain the system for five to $10,000 a year. And the truth is, is that we were spending more than that amount, taking care of flood-related damage at the same location, taking care of the same property by widening out the culvert and always cleaning it out to make sure that water was always able to go through. We want to be sure that the various species, including the fish that are in the Wappingers Creek, continue to thrive here so that we can have a beautiful, sustainable, green community. This isn't just a lake for the village of Wappingers Falls. It's a lake for New York State. It's a lake for Dutchess County. Now we have a project that addresses the lake. It addresses our drinking water quality, and it addresses flooding all at the same time. I'm sure we could bring the village lake back to its former glory. And we used to have a lot of fun in this lake, really. And the water was beautiful. And we used to have 10 or 15 kids up there all the time swimming. I kayak on the creek at least three times a week, I think, and on the Hudson. It's wonderful. I absolutely love it. And when I take my friends out, it's just, I mean, people are just astounded how beautiful it is. And the water and the creek are one of the most important things in my life. And if we can refocus and reimagine our towns and cities with water as an asset running around and through them, we'll have gone a long way to bringing those cities back and making them places that people will want to live in and want to live in well. The big question now is, what do we do to stem these issues with the phosphates and the nitrates and all the silt flowing from upstream on the Wappingers Creek to prevent further issues with our wells and our drinking water. This isn't just the village of Wappingers Falls problem. This problem exists for every municipality that tries to protect its citizens from floods, that tries to provide good, clean drinking water to citizens who might be using private wells. What's really important to me and, and the people I talk to is the fact that we protect our drinking water. Green solutions like Renewage's managed ecosystem that will protect our water supply for the next 100 years are the most important important investments that we can make. If we don't do that, we're going to have to add more filtration to this plant here. We're going to have to possibly move our wells to another location. We need it now. It has to happen now. I think this can be done, but it needs to be done now. The hard work now starts as we gather stakeholders, work together, and find ways that make most sense to retrofit this entire watershed that's been so heavily developed over the past 100 years. Scenic Hudson, uh, a land conservancy group, uh, since it's an estuary, the Hudson River estuary, and because we're on a greenway, both the water trail and a walking trail, we have 
possibilities of partnerships with all of those various organizations to obtain funding to make improvements along the way. It's been a pleasure to work with Renewage, to work with them, with their knowledge base, with everything that they know about watersheds, but also to work with a group of people who understand what developers are up against, understand that this is a cost-effective way of treating a problem that could cost Hudson Valley residents millions and millions of dollars in the future and could cost us our very important water supply. This project is just one example of the kind of work that Renewage does. We're a group of innovative engineers and natural scientists who have a variety of different approaches, practices, and technologies that we're constantly working on and improving to provide means of treating wastewater in an economical, ecological, and sustainable manner. I worked at IBM as a programmer and I thought I was a desk jockey and I find out that I'm a closet environmentalist. I had no idea that it was that important to me, but it really is.